I'm Bridget Fettesee, and this is your Dumpster Fire for the week of February 27th to March 5th. And the unicorns dance while the world burns, world burns, world burns. And we're all here. Luna's here. Well, we're not all here. Sam's not here again. Just for those of you who are worrying in the comments, Sam is okay. She had a death in the family. She's been home dealing with that. But she, people are like, I'm really worried about Sam in the comments. We killed her. <laughs> Klaus Schwab came for her. Dave's here. Hey, everybody. Dave is in the house sitting your, in. Your, your no favorite, Mr. Fetacy today. He's your off. favorite writer and hot sauce tycoon. <laughs> <laughs> and Miss Maggie, who we can't do any of this without. If you like what we're doing and believe in this ragtag group of internet losers. <laughs> the Isle of Misfit Toys. <laughs> Please make sure you go to Vetacy.com and become a subscriber or just put your name on our mailing list. You can just sign up and follow the stuff that I put outside of the paywall. But if you sign up for Vetacy.com behind the paywall, you get the unedited version of Dumpster Fire every single Sunday. Coming to you in your home, uncensored ish. Maggie, so get, Maggie gets the sum of it. Every now and then, there's something I'll take out, but it's rare. <laughs> it is rare. But uh, usually, when Sam's here, it's something truly inappropriate <laughs> that Sam said. Every once in a while, it's like Sam, you, you're going to get us canceled, <laughs> completely canceled. And you can subscribe and see all of the action back there. We do live streams. We also have. Um, workouts for the ladies who join, which is a really fun part of the community. And the community is just great. It's a great place to just be yourself and meet some like-minded misfit toys. It is if Fetacy.com is truly the Isle of Misfit Toys. So join us. And because I'm a moron, moron! 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 <laughs> <laughs> I'm extending the sale of the women. Women! Women! <laughs> <laughs> I'm extending the sale for the women's sweatshirt because it is Women's Women's Month and it's Women's Day, women's. the International Women's Day this week. And it's Women's History Month. And it's yeah. Women's History Month. And I'm an idiot. <laughs> and probably we should both have, are. <laughs> probably should have launched the women's sweatshirt hoodie in March. in March, which would have made more sense. So we're extending it. And it's not too late for you to get yours. You can go to... SquidprintDTG.com slash fetacy dash shop. And there's a link in the description below. We had some <laughs> comments from last week. We'll just go over a couple of them. Someone wrote, at Cousin Maggie, being an expert in foreign policy and all things, I can easily <laughs> explain the current situation in Russia. Think of a game of risk that is going on into hour three. <laughs> Russia is the player that is tired of playing and being stuck in Northern <laughs> Asia and just wants to go watch TV. So to get out of the game, they Leroy Jenkins into the weakest area, Ukraine, and overextend, hoping someone takes them out so they can go back to watching TV. All the other board game players get pissed and they team up and annihilate them, then never invite them back to game night. <laughs> You lost me at risk. <laughs> you know what the Ukraine is? It's a sitting duck. A road apple, Newman. The Ukraine is weak. It's feeble. I think it's time to put the hurt on the Ukraine. I kind of like I'm that explanation. I love that. It's a great explanation, <laughs> but I was just like, well, never played risk. I've so. never played risk either. It's a, it's a game I've always wanted to play. I figured I'd probably be terrible at it, but. Why? I don't know. Because you're bad at taking risks. <laughs> no, I just, I have no idea how to act. It's, it's she it's can't read a map. A lot of strategy and, you know, like socio-political knowledge and yeah. stuff like that. <laughs> Jaren's like, I love Risk. Right. I think he, I think he's into that. We kind should of stuff. definitely do a series where Jaren teaches us to play nerdy board games. Yeah, Risk, that would be hilarious. Uh, Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> yeah, all of those. When I was in college, I had a bunch of people that used to play Drunken Risk. Oh, Jesus! And then it makes you realize how someone can become like a dictator because you got all these <laughs> drunken frat bros going, "I'm conquering the world." I mean, this is really basically <laughs> just what, Russia that's right now. Right? Yeah. Yeah. That's where we're we are. Drunken frat bro going, "We're gonna bomb some places." <laughs> so that comment was from john v thank you john that was a great analysis then we've got <laughs> ty sparks i appreciate all the work you do ladies as i'm sure everyone else does i didn't know you before covid and these dumpster fires have turned me into a lifelong fan and i'm not even female what no no i'm not but if i can't swallow my pride and hate the patriarchy for one hour every monday morning how could i continue to patriarchy the rest of the week <laughs> you be you ladies 
I love that I one. I liked that. I liked that comment. Price Gooseby said, I need more of these longer dumpster fires. This turned around my day. I oh. thought that was nice. And Crystal Lake said, that Pornhub joke was so effing funny. I was late for work. <laughs> People loved the Pornhub People joke. People loved the Pornhub joke. I'm glad I wasn't afraid to make it because self- self-censorship. <laughs> and then Dratbone in the community said... Phetasy, 23 years to the day after I married my lovely bride, you gave words to the exact reason I try not to piss off my wife. Slavic women will key your soul. <laughs> Truth. Ding, ding, ding. My better Thank half you. also wanted me to pass on how appreciative she was of putting words to it. Oh, I'm good. so glad that we can entertain them. Not masses, because it seems that we're... Uh, She's still getting throttled. It's a small <laughs> elite group. <laughs> it's a small elite force of people that we're entertaining. You guys are the Marines of people who are consuming media. <laughs> the I mean, few and the small. The proud. The proud. <laughs> it, is, the brave. it is super nice, though, like that everybody participates and lets us know. Because I don't know if you're like me. Sometimes when you're like, oh, you guys enjoy this? This yeah. is great. We just create it because we like doing it. And yeah. then when we get positive feedback like that, like I get people messaging me like, you write for Dumpster Fire? I'm like, oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I guess I do. You uh-huh. know, because I just like doing it. It's just yeah. a good time. So it's like, we're all on this Isle of Misfit toys together. So like your positive feedback works. It yeah. does. I heard from a bunch of people in DMs last week. And it just reminds me, because I usually feel like I'm just screaming into the void for my own sanity. Right. As much as sometimes it's hard for me to show up to this, I always feel better afterwards Uh because I'm like, oh, thank God I got that out of my system, all the like rage and angst and confusion. And then people are like, thank you for sharing your rage and angst and confusion because I feel the same way. And so that it it does. We do see you. We do appreciate you. And it is a reminder to me of why I'm doing this other than my own therapy, therapeutic reasons. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And it's nice to receive feedback and and feel like it helps. I mean, I hear a lot of bad all the time. I logged in to Twitter the other day and literally the first words I read were you are a piece of garbage and a horrible person. And I was like, okay, awesome. So it's nice to hear nice things because I hear a lot of not nice. Bridget takes (laughs) takes all the hits for the team, too. So. I if hear you can say something nice to Bridget in the comments, please do. I'll pass it along. <laughs> <laughs> She's pregnant and needs to hear some good I'm things. I'm like a raw nerve. <laughs> I was crying last night. I'm like, I can't do this anymore. <laughs> I'm too sensitive. <laughs> I don't have a thick skin. <laughs> We're starting this week with the BDE Award. All right. And it goes to the Ukrainians who are still fighting. They have not given up. Those scrappy little Ukrainians out there fighting the super world power. I hate covering this because we. by the time this goes out, it it gets like worse and worse every week. Yeah. And it could get very, very ugly. And given what Putin's done in Syria, I know that mother is not afraid to take some civilians out just because he feels like it. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm a little bit unsettled at how this seems to continue to like slowly escalate. Mm-hmm. Even just this morning as we were coming to film, there was like some word coming out or breaking news and I'm not sure if it was true or not that Putin views the sanctions as escalation. Right. And, to, and it's like, oh like great, an act so of war, war and basically. war. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> awesome. That yeah. basically proves the point of like it's like a frat bro playing drunken risk he's like you looking at my girl that's an escalation bro (laughs) so then we have uh Zelensky still because we all should have known he had giant balls because there was this amazing video of him when he was still a comic that came to the surface oh yeah where he was playing um Uh, the piano yeah Hava Nagila (laughs) yeah with his dick Yeah, they can't quit now, those Ukrainians. The whole world's behind them, and he's a f-ing comic, so he's not going to stop till he's dead. Dave can attest yeah, I mean, to this. <laughs> my favorite part about this is that like, it, it is both lauded that he was a comedian and doing so well, and also people are trying to do that thing that they do to comedians. Like, you should just stick to jokes. You could just... <laughs> All right, well, one of us is running an entire country, so eat my ass. You yeah. Know? And do you know how mentally ill you have to be to be a comedian? terribly (laughs) (laughs) like literally that's what people don't understand it's like 
comedians are some of the most like masochistic you go up on stage and you bomb and you're like man i'm never doing this again and then someone can call you he's like hey i got gig down the street you're like i'm doing this again <laughs> i know it's so nuts. it's nuts and you'll make like five dollars it and, does and spend 80 in gas but it's it's there's a mental fortitude to that you know like definitely there's... but also a mental illness mentally ill comics never give up this guy has nothing to lose that's what people don't realize about comedians. We have nothing to lose. We are perpetually at rock bottom. <laughs> <laughs> this is our starting point. Well, and two, it's like uh, our give a f tanks couldn't be emptier right now. No. And then there are all the TikTokers thirst trapping Zelensky. I would never let a man spit in my mouth. I don't know why y'all keep saying, oh, spit in my mouth, spit in my mouth. That's fucking next. I mean, can you imagine you are close to death every day of your entire life and you've never been more f***able? <laughs> <laughs> it's just so wild how we put these dudes on pedestals. I, I kind of reminds me of the Cuomo sexual stuff. Remember when everyone Ugh. was like drooling all over Fauci and Cuomo mm -hmm. and they're like, I, I, I can't wait to f*** him. And I'm like, can we just not turn every one of these dudes into like some kind of boy <laughs> <laughs> that's how the, sad the state of manhood is right now that if a man like steps up to the plate and behaves like a man everyone in the world is like that's my f boy especially if he's got a jawline it's like you, you got a jawline and a, and you're doing some shit game on well, that's another reason why Zelensky will never quit. He's like, I got to make it through this war so I can f all these women that are he tweeting has a about very me. Very strong wife. Yeah, he's a strong Slavic wife. You yeah. don't want to piss her off. He's not. He's not f these TikTokers. She might. <laughs> <laughs> all right, then we have Russia. So Russian, a Russian businessman puts out a million dollar bounty on Putin. I'm so glad that me and this Russian billionaire and apparently Lindsey Graham. <laughs> Lindsey Graham cracker. Agree on something. Lindsey Graham came out and said the same thing. He was like, we should just put a hit on this guy. I don't think that's what he said exactly, but he implied it. To paraphrase. Yeah. <laughs> the only way this shit ends, my friend, is for somebody in Russia to take this guy out. I was like, see, I'm not the only one. And Jaron's like, oh, yeah, you're proud to be in the same mental space as Lindsey Graham. <laughs> like, maybe not proud. He's like, that but... guy's a moron <laughs> like are you calling your wife a moron <laughs> i'm carrying our child I feel mad. <laughs> this is a very strange time because i agree with the russian oligarch billionaire and lindsey graham about assassinating putin <laughs> <laughs> maybe it's just the pregnancy hormones i'll watch this when i'm not pregnant and be like whoa no, I, I'm on the same page. I think we should take that f***er out. <laughs> Luna agrees. I th my thing is, is like he's offering a million dollars. It's like, is that in US dollars or is that in... Like rubles? Yeah, rubles. Which is nothing. It's like, if it's in rubles, it's like, here's a bottle of vodka to go kill this guy. <laughs> a million dollars doesn't even seem like that much considering that this guy is like a billionaire, right? Right. And how, and how hard it would yacht. be to actually pull off assassinating Putin. One million dollars. A million dollars. It's like, hey, I'll give you a hundred bucks if you go break into that federal building. <laughs> okay. <laughs> then we have fake news. Almost everything that went viral last week was fake. And do we learn anything? No. No, we don't. So this is all the stuff that came out that was not true. Fake news. Ukrainians are uploading TikToks to teach people how to drive Russian tanks. Apparently this was an old video. Fake news. Turns out the ghost of Kiev wasn't a real thing. Fake news. Well maybe is a real thing, but none of the videos associated with it were real. Right. Those are video games. He is may or may not be a real thing. Exist. <laughs> <laughs> Rumors are going around that Steven Seagal has joined the Russian army. Cool. Fake news. And then it turns out that Pornhub did not ban Russian users. This one really hurts. <laughs> Let me have that. At least you got to make your joke that everyone loved. Yeah, and that's like kind of a minor one. But... Honestly, media literacy.
We really do need media literacy. It's important. I, I don't know why it's not the first thing you're learning at all. And we want to believe these things. Yeah. Because it just like tickles our biases. And it's just a, a smorgasbord of confirmation bias out there right now. You can choose your own adventure narratively and have all the fun in the world with this. The news might be fake, but the jokes are real. <laughs> All now right. we have a new category this week, a yacht for every pleb. Woohoo! The hunt for Red Yacht Tober commences. <laughs> Russian oligarchs are fleeing in their yachts as they increasingly become targets for asset seizures. Moscow is not the worry. The worry is the Americans. I just love how many Russian oligarchs there are. And they're getting mad. Yeah. With they super yachts. Are getting mad. <laughs> yeah. I love how they're like, we need to find these super yachts. Like, bro, it's not fucking hard to find a yacht. They'll find us. They'll find us and hunt Nobody's us. Nobody's going to find us. That's enough, Yuri. They're like the sea cows of the ocean. <laughs> of like, they're slow and easy to find. <laughs> I don't know how you can't find these. They there are not many places you can put these super yachts. <laughs> they're enormous. <laughs> Meanwhile, Jeff Bezos is probably still stuck. With his super yacht. Stuck in the Netherlands. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Trying not to get eaten by the locals. Yeah. So German authorities seized one of the yachts. France seized a yacht. One yacht fled to the Maldives. And then a <laughs> Ukrainian soldier tried to sink his Russian boss's yacht. The officers and I will submerge beneath you and scuttle the ship. This is how I will make good on my campaign promise. A yacht for every pleb. <laughs> We will seize them from the Russian oligarchs. And then we will come for the, the American oligarchs. <laughs> it's a good plan. There are plenty of them out there. I love that. I, there's so, so many yachts, by the way. <laughs> what the f am I doing wrong with my life? I'm, I guess I haven't like looted my country in the aftermath of the Soviet Union. <laughs> <laughs> Born in the wrong What's era. What's a girl need to do to make a billion dollars around here? Come on. I feel like that's what all the tech oligarchs are doing right now, actually, like looting America in the freaking fall of, a, of COVID times. Sounds we about see right. you. I love how all the leftists are like, can we make all billionaires known as oligarchs? <laughs> I'm like, I'm on board if it means we can take all their yachts <laughs> and put the homeless on them and give people homes. Bridget stands by her campaign pledge. A yacht for every club. <laughs> yeah, that's, a, that's a winning solution. People don't want the homeless people camping uh, on the streets. Just put them on yachts. You don't, you don't have to see them. Send them out to sea. <laughs> <laughs> and and like, just have them living on caviar. <laughs> that's the funny thing about the, the crews of these boats that are being seized. They're just like stuck on the boats kind of right now until especially like in the Maldives and it is like how long till they're just subsisting on caviar and champagne. Uh huh. And it does remind me so much of being in Saint Tropez and being like, there's a f load of Russians there. I can see why they're mad. When they were like, We're gonna sanction these Russians, people were like, Uh, oh, what good is that gonna do? I'm like, You don't understand how many Russians are gallivanting around Europe and Italy. They've all got houses in Lake Como. There's one Russian oligarch who's on Russian state media who is bitching about how he wouldn't be able to go to his two houses by freaking George Clooney's. Oh, God. <laughs> Say a prayer and light a candle for the oligarchs of the world. They're really struggling. Then we have Olds in charge. Uh, <sighs> the State of the Union happened. And someone seemed to have slipped Nancy Pelosi some Molly. <laughs> <laughs> what is wrong with her? Her jaw's always going. She she was so distraught. I didn't hear a word that Biden said because I could not. She was talking to Kamala. It was like. It was like when somebody's giving a presentation in class and, and they're boring anyways. And then the two like girls behind them are just like <laughs> chatting away. And you're like, what are you doing? And she just kept trying to talk to her. And Kamala kept trying to ignore her because, you know, she seemed slightly aware of what was going on. And, and Nancy had no idea. These, they're just so old. They're so old. Uh huh. It's it, it, the yeah. house chamber 
is the most well-staffed, opulent nursing home in America. <laughs> How many people were in diapers in that room at that moment? <laughs> I bet at least 10. Uh-huh. At least. She looked crazy. What she is was rubbing that? her hands together like, it's pudding night, Joe. Wrap <laughs> this shit up. <laughs> I know she's getting excited like she's like she's one square away from winning bingo <laughs> standing up. Come on. I know. And she stood up for no reason like she was anticipating something, but then it didn't happen. And I don't know. That's my whole take on the suck of the union. How can you expect the incontinent to protect the Constitution? <laughs> <laughs> Jaren's like, this is the you get a pony speech, which is so true. Uh-huh. It's like, you get a pony, you get a pony, everyone gets a pony. It's not true. And it was so wild. The wildest thing about that speech was when he was like, we don't need to defund the police. We need to fund the police. I'm like, am I listening? What is happening right now? The answer is not to defund the police. Right. It's to fund the police. They must be so worried. At times, they sounded like freaking conservatives. They must be worried about those midterms. Yeah. And by the way, thank you, Putin, for taking care of COVID and disappearing it from the news completely. Yeah, right. COVID was cured by Putin. I think we owe him all a debt of gratitude. That man has done a service to the world. Even the L.A. mask mandates have been rolled back. It's crazy. Capitalism always wins. A doghouse that was hit by a meteorite is expected to fetch more than $200,000 at auction. (laughs) That sounds like a Bruce Willis movie. (laughs) It's like, when when did uh, someone's Mima start running Christie's? It's like, we got this doghouse that was hit by a goddamn meteor. We'll start the bidding at $200,000. It was a tin roof doghouse. I'm like, where is there a tin roof doghouse? Oh, it was in Costa Costa Rica. Yeah. I'm like, that seems like a strange American doghouse. <laughs> well, I mean, the cost of plywood is up, so it has to be tinned. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But there's like a little round meteorite hole in the roof. Apparently, this is a very rare event. And by the way, we live in the weirdest freaking times where people are refugees everywhere. People are starving everywhere. And then you're, pe- someone can buy this. In It's probably a Russian oligarch. Probably. To buying this put on his yacht for Fido <laughs> <laughs> patriarchy so crafty a camp allows two men to stay in a cabin with elementary school girls well it is well within their rights as they thems that's what I've been told by the state of California huh yeah this was <laughs> apparently a school trip and two me- biological men who identify as women were so staying in a cabin with these girls and the parents didn't find out about it till afterwards and they were all pissed off. Has CNN commented on this at all? I love how in the article they were like, we can't confirm whether this happened or not when parents were like, what the f***? Why were there two dudes sleeping with our elementary school girls? And I'm like, yeah, they can't confirm it because they can't confirm what gender they are. (laughs) That's the f***ing first problem with this. (laughs) How is this California law? Like, when did that happen so quickly? Probably when the pedos got in charge. Because <laughs> there are all, the, everything's run by pedos, apparently. <laughs> apparently. CNN pedos is, and oligarchs. we know that. <laughs> what I've learned in the past five years is that pedos and oligarchs run the world. <laughs> <laughs> Just in case you didn't know. In case you didn't get, pick up on this. It's been a revelation to us, you too. <laughs> I guess all those conspiracy theorists were right all along. <laughs> There is a cabal of globalists who are drinking children's blood and they run the world. <laughs> and we're all just pawns and they're war games <laughs> and they're real life game of risk. Get wrecked, big tech. Computer generated AI faces are becoming more trustworthy than real faces. There's been an increase in computer generated faces masking Russian troll groups spreading misinformation about Ukraine. You wouldn't think they figured it out when his name was Max Hedrum. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not ashamed of my boomer jokes. <laughs> Gen Xers will get that too, uh-huh. but no one else. No one else. <laughs> no one. Kids will be like, what? What are you talking about? Yeah, people trust AI faces more than real faces. Men trust sex robots more than real women. <laughs> like it's, We're just basically heading into the <laughs> decline of civilization. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah, we've crossed the uncanny valley, I guess. 
Like that, that is strange. Yeah. Uncanny Valley used to alert us when something wasn't quite right about human faces. And now it's like, oh, I trust this robot. <laughs> and that human, f*** them. <laughs> They look shifty to me. And, and you think any of this information would make anybody go, maybe we should be better humans. It's like, no, let the robots win. So right now, the America's only hope, I think, is Mexican weather ladies. <laughs> <laughs> because people still like watching Mexican weather ladies. Have you seen these women? No. You've no. You've not I seen haven't. these women. I haven't. I, I think those uh, those watching the show know that uh, the Mexican weather ladies are on point. I'm Googling it. Mexican weather ladies. It's like why it's why nobody in Machu Picchu gives a care <laughs> about the weather. They're like, oh, okay, it's gonna thunderstorm as long as I look at this luscious oh, damn. weather lady. Jesus. <laughs> and these are real they are hot. These are real these are real humans. Oh my god. Uh, it's they the only ridiculous. thing that's gonna stop the AI takeover. <laughs> it's the so Mexican we weather hire ladies. Mexican weather we'll ladies. Save us all. I'm gonna cut to Mexican weather lady report right now for you coming to you. For your viewing the pleasure. Studio. Nos espera un fin de semana espectacular. Hoy termómetro llega hasta reportar 26 grados. I think we should start paying attention to the weather in Mexico more often. <laughs> What's the weather look like this week, Yannette Garcia? <laughs> These are the only women that I trust uh -huh. to tell me anything. Tax the rich. A cargo ship full of Porsches and Lamborghinis worth over $400 million catches fire and sinks. It has been a very rough week for the world's richest people. <laughs> I think we all need to take a moment of silence and consider the effect this is going to have on their egos, their ability to get laid, and their ability to get a hard on. <laughs> I know someone in one of the articles was like, I've been waiting a year for my custom spider or whatever, and now it's all gone. My $100,000 Porsche uh, is not going to be here. Yeah. What am I going to do? My favorite is that picture in the article where the, the ship looks like it's worth less than any single <laughs> car on it. Yes. <laughs> this was just another asset seizure. It was just a crafty one. Uh-huh. They just like blew it up, really. Ukraine's put, taken a <laughs> <laughs> turned crafty on this approach. I would like to see the world's smallest and most expensive violin playing for <laughs> these people. Poor little people. <laughs> <laughs> then we have what is happening? A white woman starts throwing things in Walmart, yelling, Black Lives Matter, my pussy matters. Black There are easier ways to get a black guy to f*** you. <laughs> and then this kind of display, young lady. <laughs> this is so weird to me because I can't tell from the video if this person is like a racist making fun of Black Lives Matter or a crazy liberal. Right. Who's just, is this like the new thing you just yell when you're when you're having a breakdown as a liberal? Or is she a turf <laughs> who is like, well, she my got pussy into a matters. Prius, so I'm, I don't, I'm leaning towards liberal. <laughs> we didn't know what she was throwing things at. I don't, I, my impression was it was kind of like some sort of sexy display that she was offended by. No, but it was I don't Yankee know. candles. She was throwing Yankee candles. She was throwing like food, I no, thought. No, Yankee candles. Well, she was throwing them at something. She was throwing though. great value candles. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> it's a it's amazing when it's just like it's a, the the unhinged crazy white lady is just an amalgamation of all the sides, and you can't tell. Like it's like what is this chameleon? I, I see it's melting down, but I don't know what it believes in. <laughs> What is her message? <laughs> I'm confused. Which side is she on? Should I be offended or should I be with her? This Which... isn't even that rare in Walmart. This is just like part of the training video. <laughs> <laughs> True. This is like a Tuesday morning in Walmart. Hi, welcome to Walmart. We're so glad you've decided to become staff here. Let's go through our training videos. <laughs> and it's like fat people riding on Black Thursday. And when a, when someone starts yelling, Black Lives Matter, my pussy matters, what is the correct response? <laughs> Pull out your phone and videotape. I always think it's funny when you see someone having a meltdown next to pool noodles. It's like when the pool noodles have a higher IQ than the person throwing things. 
White women are really having a rough time. Let's light a candle for <laughs> white women. <laughs> uh, all right. <laughs> Says the woman who like has a public breakdown on YouTube every week. <laughs> <laughs> At least you're able to laugh about you it. Know where you're, you know where it belongs. It doesn't belong in aisle six. It belongs on YouTube. That's exactly where it belongs. Where does it end up anyways? Where did that exactly. video end up? Right? Exactly. Just you're cut, right. out, cut out the middleman. If you're going to have a meltdown, just start a show. You're like, I'm going to upload it myself. <laughs> Take control of your meltdowns. That should be my next TED Talk. Then we have Randy Zuckerberg, Mark Zuckerberg's sister, made a music video about crypto, we think, and it's bad. It's really, really bad. It's so bad. I don't even want to subject our audience to this. This is worse than the graphic videos coming out of Ukraine. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. That was a horrible joke. I didn't think you could be any more awkward than Mark, and then I saw his sister. I know. And the sad thing is, is she's the loser of the family. I know. Imagine <laughs> sitting at the dinner table and Mark's like, I made a multi-billion dollar company. She's like, want to see what I made, guys? <laughs> we all need to support Randy. Go watch her music video. She did a really good job. She worked really hard on it. She worked really hard on this. <laughs> and it's a good distraction while Mark is getting his software update. And the f***ed up thing is that Mark has been so anti-crypto. Now they're all like coming around, but he's been like not on board or supportive of this at all. Mm -hmm. Twitter has been, that's why they're all on Twitter because Zuckerberg's been like not having it mm -hmm. on Facebook. This, I couldn't even get through the whole thing. I don't thing. even know what it's about. No, I, NFTs and crypto. Like, I don't understand. Maybe Matt Damon hired these people <laughs> to just distract from his bad crypto ad. These mere mortals, just like you and me. South Park was going f***ing after Matt Damon for that crypto ad. What does Matt Damon say on that Bitcoin commercial? Fortune favors the brave. My dad said he listened to Matt Damon and lost all his money. Yes, everyone did, but they were brave in doing so. That episode was amazing. That crypto 80s, 90s throwback video was almost as bad as the Applebee's commercial running during oh. the air raid sirens. Almost. It was worse. Yeah, that's, that's you know it's bad when it's like I cringed more at your music video than the in dollar chicken wings running during air raids. The yeah. cowboy dancing during war. Yeah. Yep. Dumpster diving. What's next in the dumpster? Sploosh. <laughs> Ukrainians are taping looters to light poles with plastic wrap and signs that say Marauder on them. Is this true? Do uh, we have we confirmed this? Have we fact checked this? No, we have not. <laughs> I can I can count on my team not to fact check. The crack judge. team of researchers. <laughs> this is not a new show. We tell you time and time again, and yet you still stick with us. Now, all it takes is a Super Bowl for us to duct tape people to light poles in this country. <laughs> you know if this was happening in America, and I always think about this, it would be anarchy and chaos immediately particularly in like the big cities yeah because that was something that struck me allegedly that was coming out of ukraine was like there hadn't been them that much looting people hadn't been panicking they were being pretty reasonable and thinking about each other and i always think about the japanese earthquake and tsunami how they were like getting in line and waiting their turn i'm like this would never no never be the case in america no this is where our, be like, Every man for our individualism really comes to bite us in the ass. <laughs> yeah. You'd literally have people in the streets going, I'm going to shoot that bomb with this rifle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Try to come from my asteroid doghouse. I'll show you. <laughs> yeah. Someone's always like, you have supplies, but are you going to actually like, shoot someone if they come for them? And I'm like, yes. You're like, I will shoot a mother. I'm American. <laughs> It's my God-given right to shoot someone who's trying to loot my stuff. <laughs> then we have uh, the fart in the jar market expands. This time they're ethically sourced. I guess that means that they're not being force farted. 
<laughs> oh, right. Right? Like that woman who we covered, she was, it's it's like. She was eating like beans and this high diet and trying sick. to get. Yeah, a bunch. So she was like forcing them. Is that what they mean by ethically sourced? I don't know, but Did I'm like, the shouldn't article? they be like? There is no article. It's just some screenshots. No, which yeah. no women like, were harmed in the making of these farts. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, shouldn't they be like free range farts, not ethically sourced? <laughs> some like f-ing hippies are running around. I in only the field. squat over the jar when I feel my body's ready to make a taprat. <laughs> Let me tell you, I've been around hippies and they fart a lot. Mm-hmm. It's all those beans and lentils. It's all those f-ing beans. <laughs> it's that quinoa fart. <laughs> lentils and veggies. Yep. The vegan diet makes you fart. Sam said that she's going to start selling her farts, though. We're going to sell one of Sam's farts in a jar just to see how it does. <laughs> see, see what the market is. Hey, yeah. if they're buying dog houses with meteorites, why won't they buy Sammy Flaps and Folds farts? Tell Sam in the comments how much you would pay for one of her jars of farts. <laughs> yes, please. We yes. need to know. We need to know how much you would pay. Also, we might not be getting throttled. Jaren's theory is that it's been since Sam is gone. Our, our numbers have plummeted. Yeah. Um, her, no, we're definitely getting throttled too. But Her audience is like, this. J- I'm out. No, Sam. I'm no out. conspiracies. What the f***? I'm out. Then we have Breaking Bridget. Nothing broke me this week. I'm taking my cues from the Ukrainian people, and I will be unbreakable. I will be resilient. I will be strong. Nothing will break me from henceforth. Bridget. Thank oh. you. Thank you. Are you ready to go shoot Tom I can't fire? do it. You don't know what it's like, Maggie! From this day forward, mark my words, you will not see a broken Bridget. Trying to be funny when I feel so dead inside. You will see a strong Bridget. I decree that I am unbreakable. <laughs> I feel like I'm veering into my dictator, <laughs> my dictator phase. All right, and then the internet is glorious. And we did it another week. It's a miracle. And this one, you're gonna like. Para que es un gusto tenerte acá. Venga, alegría. Nuestra casita. De la tarde. Así que bueno, tómelo en cuenta en sus planes. La mañana nos espera para este fin de semana. Estaremos amaneciendo. Abríguense. Y bueno, este frente frío está afectando el norte, noreste, oriente. Y es que en la imagen de satélite podemos ver dos. That is the news. We had. Corinne Fisher and Christina Hutchinson on Walk-Ins Welcome from the Guys We F*** podcast. There is a crossover event. I will. I was on theirs. I'm not sure when it's launching, but they were on ours this week. Subscribe wherever you can to Walk-Ins Welcome. Check it out if you like our stuff. I think you'll like the different tone of that. Check out Geriatric Mommy on Substack. Our Substack is going to grow. So go to bridgetfetacy.substack.com and you can subscribe for free. And we're going to have tons of content coming out on Substack very soon. And there's lots of stuff there already. Go to Rumble for all of our video first. We will drop all video on Rumble first and foremost. Rumble's growing. Go follow us there. We'll be there when we inevitably get booted off YouTube. Dumpster Fire is also a podcast. And a lot of you like listening to it. Thank you. Please subscribe even if you don't listen to it. Just so... We look cooler than we are. (laughs) (laughs) Go to Fetacy.com and subscribe if you believe in this show. We have the unedited version of this show, which drops every Sunday, and also live streams and workouts and a whole community back there. It's very cool. Dave is in there. Maggie's in there. It's the only social media you'll ever find Maggie. Shop our merch at BridgetFetacy.com. We also have our limited edition sweatshirt, women, at squidprintdtg.com slash fetacy dash shop. All of these links are in the bio in case you need any of this information. And I really want to thank our sponsors, Sheath, IP Vanish, BetterHelp, and Fume. We can't do this without our sponsors. Thank you, supporters, subscribers, viewers, commenters. Thank you, Luna. Thank you, Dave. Thank Thanks, you, Maggie, Bridget. for being here today. Thank, Thank you. you, Andy Chandler, Matt Monroe, Better Fantasy, and Sammy Flaps and Folds. <laughs> Thank you, Zen Pro Audio, for the mic. Go to zenproaudio.com for all of your audio needs. Thank you, Mr. Fantasy, for his moral support. 
telling me that I look beautiful before I come on stage and really want to cry. This has been your dumpster fire for the week of February 27th to March 5th. I'm Bridget Fettersy. Now make us rich so we can please have a yacht. <laughs>